Another tool to collect moths is the bucket trap. It's useful because unlike a sheet, you don't have to constantly monitor it throughout the night. It's great for collecting large numbers of insects for biodiversity inventories or surveys, but often takes a long time to sort. Here are the components of my personal bucket trap. A five gallon bucket you can buy at your local hardware store. At the bottom of the bucket is a small hole to allow water to drain out. Inside the bucket goes a removable collecting tray with subdividers. Two differently sized mesh wire screens to sort insects by size. A finely screened funnel to direct rainwater out of the hole in the bottom of the trap. Two small containers with rope wicks to hold ethyl acetate, which I use as my killing agent. And finally, a large funnel with a mounted UV light and planes of clear plexiglass. Trap placement is everything. I could spend an entire video devoted to selecting optimal habitat, but the most important thing to know is to place your bucket trap where it can be well seen by moths, but not by humans. Flyways under otherwise dense canopies or forest edges seem to work well. It's also helpful to have a diversity of native plant species in the vicinity. Or if you're targeting a specific species of moth, placing the trap near the moth's host plant will offer you the greatest chance of success. After assembling the trap and pouring ethyl acetate into the containers, I put the funnel and light on top and connect it to a battery. I'll come back first thing in the morning to pick it up and see what I've caught. It's now 7am and I've returned to retrieve my trap. After I empty the bottles of leftover ethyl acetate and drive home, the first thing I'll do is sort my catch. The nice thing about the collecting tray I use is I can pull the whole thing out of the trap to sort through it more easily. Depending on the number of moths I caught, sorting can take anywhere from a few minutes to a good portion of the entire day. Using forceps, I can immediately field pin the insects or sort them into small cotton line containers to freeze and pin later at my convenience. An important detail for any scientific collecting is to remember to write down collecting data, such as location, date, habitat, and the names of the collectors. I can now put them in a freezer. I'll demonstrate how to relax and spread moths in a separate video.